NFL Week 12 Gambling Picks brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six awesome sports books down there. Samstown, Hollywood, Fitz Casino, First Jackpot, Gold Strike, Horseshoe Casino, all awesome. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. Last week in our football picks contest, Bradford W. from Bartlett, Tennessee, went 8-2, and two, hit the tiebreaker. He wins the contest. He got two nights at Sam's Town and, what, $50 in slot play? I think something like that. You can win this week, though. Football picks contest over at winningcureseverything.com. It's right up in the top right corner. Go check that bad boy out. Last week, I went 1-4. and four. It was a bloodbath. And I'm not Chris, so it I was didn't know anything. That's a, yeah, yeah. This is my father, by the way. Chris is in Disney World. For anybody that is watching and did not know, that's what's up. Chris, however, before he went to Disney World, he won some money. He went three and two last week. It's a train wreck. I am awful at NFL picks. Twenty six, twenty seven, and two on the year. I was better last year. I was a lot better last year. Like I, I was above five hundred last year. Like really good. Uh, Chris is thirty one, twenty one, and three. Against then, the spread. Then Chris needs to be here. <laughs> Chris, and, and we will have Chris's picks on here at the end of the video. He is going to send us picks from Disney World, and I'm going to toss it in. So, uh, I'll go on and start mine off first. I got a good feeling I'm going to get back off the schneid this week. Because the week before I went 1-4, and four, I went 3-1-1. One, and one. Like, I had worked my way back up. I had been below 500 for multiple weeks, and then I had m several weeks in a row that were really good. I had a 4-1 and one week, I had a 3-1 one and 1 week, and now 1-4 and four gets me back below 500. So, I'm only one game back, though. Look, I got to go 3-2 and two just to get back to 500. I can do it. I'm feeling even better than that, though. 5-0, and oh, baby. I'm doing that this week. Bears minus 3 at the Lions. That is Thanksgiving Day, 11.30 a.m. The Bears have covered four straight, including a 34-22 win over this same Lions team two weeks ago. Before covering against the Panthers last week, the Lions had failed to cover in three straight games. Lions defense is really bad, and the offense, uh, Matt Stafford likes to turn the football over, and the Bears like to take it. Eddie Jackson, he has been returning picks all year, well, really, in his entire career. Yes. Dating back to Alabama. That's what he does. I think the Bears are going to stop this Lions team. Trubisky not... keeps getting better and better. Yeah. It, and, and, and he, so he had a couple of picks against the Vikings. But, but he's turning into a leader. Yeah, he's turning into a better player. And I like him. I think he's going to be pretty good. Uh, Anthony Miller, wide receiver. That's a playmaker right there. Touchdown machine. ATM. Um... I like the Bears here. Bears minus three at the Lions. Take the Bears all day. What you got? The Bears won by a dozen two weeks ago. Yeah, <laughs> you same game. What's same changed? Game. Nothing's changed. I mean, I understand it's on the road. It's at the Lions, uh, but the Lions have been dreadful at home on Thanksgiving. Yes. Um, I don't like the Bears having to go on a short week. But the what makes this different is it is a team that you just played. Yes. Like it will be less than work. it'll be less than two weeks removed. Yeah. So if you don't have to worry about the prep work, it's the same game. You're just playing it in a dome this time, which might actually help out Matt Stafford maybe a little bit, but it, not to make up that much. Three points is is not near enough here. Uh, game number two for me. I got the Falcons at the Saints. I'm taking the Saints minus thirteen and a half. I understand that that is a lot of points. Last week I took the Eagles because I thought that was a lot of points. I was dead wrong. I was I was 41 points wrong. That was just awful. New Orleans has covered eight straight. The last seven uh, last seven games that they have won by an average of 39 to 19. The Falcons keep losing to crap teams. Their defense they keep losing guys. I, there is nothing stylistically that they can do. They can't stop anybody. They, they can't, certainly are not going to stop the Saints. And and they're not going to be able to score enough points. I understand that the Falcons are a, a high-scoring team, or at least they would lead you to believe that because they got the talent, right? Yeah. But a couple of weeks ago when I said that I felt like Steve Sarkeesian had turned the corner, I jinxed him. 
Yeah, he turned the wrong corner. <laughs> he, he turned another corner, and he went right in the crapper. Uh, Saints minus 13 and a half. I've got them under two touchdowns. I don't think that's enough. I think the Saints at home absolutely roll Atlanta this week. Uh, they are the hottest team I think I may have ever seen. Like, I, I just in the grand scheme of, like, the past decade of watching hot NFL teams, this is another level. Drew Brees is 39 years old. Like, what is this? He is, this is like the highest quarterback rating in league history, what he's doing. Nobody can stop him. And they're talking about this dude was going to retire after this year. He might still do it. He could win a Super Bowl and just ride out into the sunset. But why? He sure is having fun. Oh, man. Like, why would you leave this? Like, this team is set up for really any quarterback to be able to win. But Drew Brees is, you know, it, like Tua Tonga-Vailoa at Alabama reminds me of him a little bit because his passes are so ridiculously accurate. Like he's he is five foot ten. He he may not even be that tall, but he can see the field better than anybody in the NFL right now. Like and that includes Tom Brady. He is just on another level. Uh, Saints minus thirteen and a half is is my pick. What's uh, what's game number two for you? I've got the same thing. Do you? Same thing. I'm on a Thanksgiving feast. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so all the same reasoning, I would assume, right? Yes. yes. Do you have any stats with yours? Other than the Falcons just can't ever stop the Saints. No, I We've mean they, they gave the up same game for twenty years. So this game they played in Atlanta in Week Three, and it was forty three to thirty seven. But at that point, the Saints had lost 48-40 to to the Bucks in Week 1, and they beat the Browns in Week 2, 21-18, mainly because the Browns could not kick field goals. Like, they just couldn't kick. They, they would have won the game. Yeah. And then in Week 3, I actually had the Falcons winning because, man, this Saints team looked awful. And then they turn it around, they get to overtime, they win the game in overtime, da 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 and then from there it has just been a massacre. So, yeah, the Saints, like, I I don't know of anybody that would be dumb enough to bet against this team right now. <laughs> I mean, that's just bad. Uh, game number three, for me, I've got the Raiders plus 11 at the Ravens. Yes, I understand there is a ton of dysfunction with the Raiders. Like, it, Derek Carr and John Gruden are fighting with each other on the sideline, but the Raiders got a win last week at the Cardinals. And I understand that the Ravens are better than the Cardinals. I do not trust Lamar Jackson for nothing, and especially not to cover 11 points. Like, I think the Raiders will score in this game. I think it is a pride thing at this point. They have figured out some things that they can do on offense. I think Derek Carr is a good quarterback. I don't think he fits into what John Gruden wants to do with that team, so I would imagine he'll be on the chopping block after the season. But Lamar Jackson... You're not going to be able to run 27 times in an NFL game. I think one game, it'll work. It ain't happening twice. Two stretching it. Two is, is stretching it, even against this Raiders team, which is, again, dreadful. This team is dreadful. But 11 points, way too much here, even on the road. I, I don't care about the West Coast, East Coast thing here. You keep running around like that, Lamar Jackson, you're going to get hurt. And after that, I mean, what, you got RG3? I mean, we're going to do the same thing all over again. So, yeah, with Joe Flacco out, I don't trust the Ravens at all. 11 points is way too much here. Go with the Raiders. What you got game three? I've got Pittsburgh at Denver. Okay. I like the Steelers on a hot streak. They owe Denver one. <laughs> That's it's an been a while since they've won in Denver. Yeah. So... I think with what they've got going offensively right now, they're going to be tough to beat. I I agree. Not in touch that one because of the history of the Steelers in Denver, but Denver, twenty second ranked defense in the league. They, they they're coming off of a win. They they got up real high. It, this is a perfect letdown spot. They got an interception that kind of turned. Yeah. A ball game around. And and don't get me wrong. Big Ben can throw picks. He can throw picks with the best of them. 
Yes, he can, but he can also beat you. He can, yeah. When you got Antonio Brown and Juju Smith and uh, at that whole bunch, you got James Conner, who I think will get back on track this week. Yeah, I like that pick. I like that. Game number four for me, I'm going against the grain again. Seahawks plus three and a half at the Panthers. I understand. West Coast traveling to East Coast for a noon kick. I got it. 10 a.m. local time for the Seahawks. Doesn't matter to me. The Seahawks are 2-1-1 one, one against the spread as a road dog this year. The only game that they did not cover was at the Bears. This feels like a field goal game to me. I think Russell Wilson will, will be able to throw against this defense. I think they're going to be able to run a little bit. I understand the Panthers are number eight against the run in the NFL, but teams have had success against them. So when you play a, a crap schedule against teams that don't run the football, yeah, your your stats look better. Yeah. So I think the Seahawks, uh, they, they're playing for their playoff lives right now. I don't know that they win the game, but it feels like a field goal either way. Uh, both of these teams like to play field goal games. Yeah. So if I'm catching three and a half, I will gladly take the hook right there. Seahawks plus three and a half is my play. What's game number four for you? I'm going back to Thanksgiving. <laughs> back to the feast. I've got Dallas. Okay. Caught them at minus nine this morning. I think it's opened. Opened at seven, seven or nine. seven and a half. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen Colt McCoy play. <laughs> That's about I've, all you need to say. I've seen Mark Sanchez play. Yeah. And it really doesn't matter which one's back there. I don't think they can score. Yeah, you're probably right. So I've got the Cowboys. And I, I would imagine... Eventually, this Redskins defense is going to break. And and but all you need very is very good. <laughs> they, I mean, they're they're really really good. But when you have no support from your offense, if you're stuck on the field all day long, having Zeke Elliott back there just pounding on you, that is eventually going to wear you out. They'll be able to get some some throws to Amari Cooper. They'll be able to get something. You know, yeah, I could I could totally see that. That seems like the smart play to me. Number five game for me and my last one, the Dolphins at the Colts. I am taking the Colts minus 10. In the past, I have been completely against taking double-digit favorites. But in this situation, the Colts have averaged 36.5 points per game in their last four the Dolphins have averaged 17 points per game in that same span. The Dolphins are only 2-5 and five against the spread in their last seven, 1-3 and three in their last four. The Colts have covered four straight. Andrew Luck is, is on a Drew Brees-esque hot streak right now, and I don't see anything about this Dolphins team that tells me that they can stop him from scoring. No. They're playing in Indianapolis, in a dome. You don't have to worry about the weather. Luck is on fire right now, and 10 points is not near enough here. I don't think Brock Osweiler can keep up with him. Uh, take the Colts minus 10. And my think? last game of the day is uh, the Texans. Monday Night Football. Tennessee. All right. What kind of line did we get? It was six, I believe. Texans minus six. Is Texans, that what you're rolling? Yeah. Okay. Texans have won seven in a row. Okay. I know they're lucky. They are. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to be lucky. I, this is a situation where they're definitely good to be. Like it's, but, but they're playing good defense. Yes. Tennessee is number 30 in the NFL in total offense. <laughs> Why can't the Texans get lucky again? I mean, I you think got a they point. win by a touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. And and if you got it at less than a, less than a touchdown, Absolutely. Like I, I like that. Um, it, this seems like the kind of game where, it, in the past, Vrabel has been able to to pick them up off of the the crap heap, you know, and and do something with them. Whenever they have faced adversity in the past, they have found a way, you know, for that defense to hunker down and and get it done. But but they've been Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Yeah, they win three, they lose three. Yeah, they win two, they lose two. And they lost last week for the first time in a couple of weeks. And, yeah, they just got embarrassed last week. And whether Mariota plays or not, it may not make a difference. 
Texans are playing good defensively. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. Like I said, Chris is going to have his picks at the end of this video. We have given you everything you need to know to be a winner. Go down to Tunica. Put some action on your favorite plays. You don't have to play all these. Pick whatever game you like. The lines will change, by the way, so go talk to your attendant. Whichever sports book you go to, they will give you an updated line. They'll help you out. It's supposed to be fun, so go have fun. Uh, it's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Like I said, they got six awesome sports books. TunicaTravel.com is the place to get more information. And as always, put in your picks over at WinningCuresEverything.com. Our football picks contest, all you got to do is pick 10 games against the spread, and you can win some awesome prizes. This week, I believe it is a $100 gift certificate to Twain Steakhouse in Samstown wow. and a $50 slot play at Samstown. So you can go down, have a nice dinner, play a few slots, maybe win a few bucks. So Winning Cures Everything is the uh, place to go for that, winningcureseverything.com. We will see you guys the next go-round. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Chris again, still in beautiful Orlando, enjoying the sights, enjoying the views, see what's going on. It's like 6 in the morning here, trying to get up, trying not to get yelled at by the family like last time. Anyway, go check out the college picks. Did something I've never done, all chalk. NFL, going just steady Eddie, doing what I've always done. I'm sitting at 60% right now, just unbelievable year. Super happy about that. Let me give you the rundown real quick. Won't waste too much of your time. I'm going 49ers plus three and a half at Tampa Bay. I got the best coach in this game. Nick Mullins is going to be the best quarterback on the field. Believe that. They're going to win the game straight up. I got a little money on the money line. They're turning things around. I got the New York football Giants. You know, they're not out of this division race right now, mainly because the division is just garbage. I can't see the Cowboys continuing to roll. But this Eagles team, I keep waiting for them to do something right. They're not flipping a switch. They're, they're just not. They're done. So I'm taking the Giants plus six at the Eagles. I'm going with the Bills. Matt Barkley, not bad at a quarterback. I might have the best quarterback in this game also against the Jags. This Jacksonville team doesn't scare anybody. That Bills defense, head and shoulders better than Jacksonville's defense. This is going to come down to who makes big defensive stands, and I'm riding with the Bills, Sean McDermott. Then you know I'm going with my Patriots. A, coming off a loss. B, coming off a bye week. C, going to the Jets? Come on. Now, saw the number <clears throat> Saw the number Monday, Tuesday at 9.5. I'm recording this on Wednesday morning. It's now 10.5. I don't know that if it gets too much bigger, it's going to scare me. I think, I think the Patriots are going to roll. I think they're going to try to get healthy and right against the Jets coming off a bye week. And lastly, I'm laying a big number. Big, big, big number. I'm taking the New, uh, the, the New Orleans Saints. I, I, I'm down here in the French Quarter of Disney World. Listen, it's, it's New Orleans Mardi Gras stuff all over the place. It's 13 and a half points of, against a divisional opponent. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. The Saints team is rolling everybody. Everybody's oohing and eyeing. Look, little, little buddy running behind me. Oohing and eyeing over the Monday night football game how amazing that was, how everyone's saying, well, that's going to be a rematch in the Super Bowl. I think the Saints are going to have something to say about that, guys. Remember, they beat this Rams team. They're the best team in the country, and I don't know that it's close. I think the gap between them and the Chiefs and the Rams is a pretty good gap. Might be wrong on that, but against the Falcons, it's immeasurable how much better they are. They'll roll them by 20. This is going to be a bloodbath take them appreciate you guys giving us some support next week we'll be back in studio like normal appreciate gary's dad holding down the fort too y'all have a go man